Howdy, everybody. Welcome on into the cargo bay where it's time for a little bit of hobby talk. Hobby talk. How you doing, BC? Well, I'm doing all right. I got this uh, nice cup of chai here. We've got some slides loaded up with Star Wars trading cards for the masses. Yeah, what, what, what more could you ask for? Oh, I know what I know what we could ask for, VC. Oh yeah, yeah, go on, go yeah. We could ask for me to have not ruined our little window down here. Um, uh, yep. All right, it's fixed now. Some people Perfect. Saw, saw a little bit of the sausage factory. I've got cold coffee. Um, all right. <laughs> not iced coffee, cold coffee. Just coffee that was once warm. Yeah, yeah. Now cooled. You know, it's been it's been cooked on the burner a little bit, so it's got a nice bite to it. But now it's cold. Ooh. But uh, yeah, I, I I I'm such like a fiend that like even if like I sit my cup, you know, whenever I sit down to do my work here, and like half of it's neglected, you know, for like 45 minutes, I look at it and I go, "Now nah, I'll drink it." Oh yeah. You know, and I'm yeah, just I'm, like down the hatch. You know, I, I drink coffee in the way that I. I used to drink alcohol, which is it's not for the flavor. <laughs> it's for the experience. Yeah, it's, it's for me to get all wiry and feel anxious yeah. instead of uh, lethargic. Uh, I'm, it's I'm, to change my body chemistry. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't even have to make me feel good. I just want to feel different. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just to the left of center, you know, just a little. All right, there we go. Yeah. Um, I'm actually excited to talk about the things we have to talk about today, BC. But before we get there, I gotta say, like and subscribe, everybody. Uh, 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 we have been getting a lot of subscribers. Unfortunately, we've also been getting a lot of unsubscribers. <laughs> uh -oh. Is it something we did? <laughs> Very possible. Um, so yeah, come on into the cargo bay if you want to be here. If you don't want to be here, get the hell on out of here. Take a hike. <laughs> um... And I think that the biggest news this week, at least for me, is uh, these Bounty Hunter 101s, BC. So <laughs> this is a long, a long saga coming to a close here. It is a long saga coming to a close. What, what Bounty Hunters was, what, 2022, early part of 2022? And that was, was it even, a was year it before and that? months after it was, I think, announced. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it was a, one of those much delayed releases. Uh, so the one of the it's a set that's I'm, I'm kind of like meh on, you know, I think yeah. it's OK, uh, it's but a there's paper, just a, a kind of ugly paper set, a kind of ugly paper set with a ton of uh, variations on a theme with the, the various bounty tiers of base cards, which is like, all right. Um, they're okay. The coolest thing about the set was this bounty buyback program where they inserted some original 77 cards that had a little foil stamp on there. Yeah, and a if nice you silver collect mythosaur it, skull. Yeah, a little, little Mandalorian-style mythosaur skull on there, uh, which was, was stamped in foil onto the 1977 trading card. And if you got, what was it, 25 of them and yeah. sent them to Tops. The idea was that you would then receive a, a one of one autograph for, for paying your bounty of these cards. Uh, so there are a few, well, we can say specifically three people who aggressively pursued uh, this particular bounty. These buyback cards became expensive. Um, yeah, I mean, the pack odds were insane. It, yeah, it was, they're not great. It was. Can you hear that horn? Is that going to come through on my end? Okay, it's gone. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the odds of finding a single bounty card was wild. And so, yeah. of course, the prices were through the roof. I think it was pretty regular to see them going for $200 plus on eBay, maybe more than that towards the end, as you know, collectors were trying to get those 25 cards right. together. Um, and so it's been a year and a half since that point. I think since these these bounties began to be sent off, and then there was controversy. Yeah. We talked about oh. where people oh. were like, "I've got my twenty five cards. What do I do?" And Tops was like, "Uh, what? What are you, what are you even talking about?" 
<laughs> what what do you mean bounty buyback? You spent how many dollars? Yeah. What are you talking about? How much time and money did you, you yeah. put into this? But that, that was, was funny. That was funny. <laughs> that was resolved. And uh, yeah. now, a long, long time later, look at look at this. Papa look Tops at... actually coughed up something I would say might be worth, uh, you know, close to the value of of those collections in some cases. Yeah, these are these are cool. So these there's uh, on the side we're currently on. There's obviously there's two sets. So uh, and and there were fifteen total one of ones that were being given away. Nowhere near that many people participated in sending in 25 buybacks. So the, the three people who completed and submitted this all got five one-of-one one autographs, which for the price that you would have paid for those bounty cards is like, that seems reasonable. Uh, and I was, I was pretty impressed yeah. with the returns on the bounty, I'd have to say. Yeah, I was not expecting this to be a thing mm -mm. where it was like, Aside from the experience and kind of the look at what I did, this is my bounty coolness of it, yeah. I definitely wasn't expecting something that on the open market might justify the pain and money <laughs> that yeah. went into the chase. But since, you know, they split up these autos, I think, in a cool way, um, yeah. I think everyone got a good selection. I was saying, yeah. you know, this, this purple Mace Windu card is maybe the coolest Mace Windu card I've ever seen. Um, Great card. But yeah, we'll see on the next slide, too, that everyone who participated seems to have gotten a good mix of, of autographs. Uh, and the card designs look great. Um, I'm sure yeah. they're of the same card stock, you know, as Bounty Hunters. They're not going to be super premium, but the cards look good, and it looks like they're in good condition. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's nice. Uh, I love this auto design. Yeah, I, th I think... I, I would have been well pleased if I had received any any one of the three. Yeah. What, what I essentially I would say are like sets of one of ones that they got. You know, you get each one has at least like two what big name signers in there, and then some you know maybe like second tier, but still like great autographs, right? But yeah. two that are at least like feels like it's worth the time and the money investment that you put into it, like a Harrison Ford and a Samuel L. Jackson in one. You've Pretty got <laughs> Diego Luna and Carrie Fisher in yeah. another one, a Dave Prowse auto, Peter Mayhew. That was my like, favorite set, VC. That, that's incredible. Uh, because Diego really Luna good. and Carrie Fisher and Peter Mayhew is someone I would like to have an autograph from eventually. Yeah. Um, and then Werner Herzog. Uh, good, good Lord. The, Warner Herzog <laughs> autographs are just one of the best things in the world. It's so it's so great. Um, yeah, I mean, it, and then if you want to go to the the next slide, we can we can show the the third bounty set, which uh, has the Hayden and uh, and the Natalie Portman. So yeah, you've got you've got the good. power couple from the the prequel trilogy in there, um, in addition to some some bounty hunters uh, as well, which which is cool. Yeah. And then in addition to that, you also got your cards back that had the the stamped red foil over the original Mythosaur thing to indicate that yes, you have completed the bounty hunt. Uh, and I believe you are uh, soon to be the owner of one of these. Yes. Buy back cards. Um, I got my my grandmother sent me a little birthday cash. <laughs> I haven't bought a card in three months. Um, so I've had my eye on this this bounty stamp Jawa for a long time uh, since I saw it first appeared uh, two years ago now or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so um, the the owner of that card put some of these up for sale for what I thought was a pretty reasonable price. I'm flat broke. I shouldn't have spent this money. Um, so I thought about haggling, but I was glad that I didn't because I think the, the sale is over now. But um, mm. yeah, it's just, you know, I'm never going to own a PSA 10 of any of those 77 cards. I like the yellow cards. This is a really weird card that's been through a weird thing. Um, and, yeah. Uh, I think it'll be cool to have in the collection and eventually get it graded just to have it slabbed. Uh, I love it. Because who knows if this kind of thing is ever going to happen again uh, from Fanatics? I I don't know. I, I mean, this was still <laughs> tops proper by the 
when this started. I think I think this started before the takeover. I could well, be it may wrong. have been conceptualized. I would imagine con- conceived at, at least prior to, but yeah, probably probably around that transition time, which is why whenever they reached out to customer service, we're like, "Hey, where am I? Where's my bounty?" They're like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> cool cool stuff. It's great to see that. Uh, the people who did complete that got what I would say is a really, really cool result uh, on those on those one of one autographs. So, yeah, good hobby news. That's always exciting, huh? Yeah, it's a cool thing. You see, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I was tempted to get that George Lucas stamped like it just, <laughs> because the this is an, a rare instance where having a 77 card that is official and unique isn't just based on the condition of the card. Um, right. You know, I really wanted one of these bounty cards out of a pack in general. Um, and to have the one that went through the journey, uh, that'll be great. Right. So, I know yeah. some other people have some up for sale still. Uh, they're not cheap, but, uh, you know, d- what I've seen on both posts are horizontal cards being priced at $50 and uh, portrait cards being priced at uh, $65, I think, on both which, considering how much was spent on the cards in the first place, I know that the bounty has been <laughs> been got, and that there right, are only yeah. seventy five of them that exist. I think you know that's that's a fair price. Uh, yeah, you know, at cool. least to start asking for. Yeah, yeah. I what a weird cool. thing. Uh, and that Jawa, just so you know, BC has Harrison Ford's bottom lip on the back. I know you, that card freaks you out. It does wig me yeah. out with that Jawa face on there. It's just it's <laughs> it's too rendered for my liking, but I can appreciate it for the the handmade artistry of the the Jawa costume. Great stuff. Well, what's on the next slide, BC? Oh. Well, I, I think I heard you say 1977 PSA 10 just a second ago, I did. and boy, howdy, what a segue to the. Uh, the huge, massive heritage auction. Uh, so these are the results. This was last, this was a week ago. Um, so these are sold results from the auction um, for a, just a buttload of PSA 10s, 1977 cards. Uh, of course, we've got the heavy hitters, uh, the Luke Skywalker no, number one PSA 10 and some guy who has gold stickers looked at it and said, this is the best one of all of the tens. So it got a little sticker on it. And this is uh, from the Heritage Auction place, not from PSA. This isn't a PSA gold sticker. This, this is, is a Heritage. guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is <laughs> some guy. guy who does this. It's uh, a we, nice sticker. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's a great sticker. It adds, <laughs> I guess, to the eye appeal. I, I mean, it, it, it's something I probably should know more about, but I really could not care less about someone grading a graded card. Uh, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. like, I'm like, okay, we get it. It's nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I but it's cool. Print some of those stickers. <laughs> yeah, Cargo Base says thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a PSA 4. Here's a Cargo Base sticker that says that's just fine if you like it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the Luke 1 sold for 78 thousand uh, dollars a not insignificant amount of money yeah that's i mean i'd have to think about saving for a couple months to uh <laughs> yeah. something like that that I'd card have to liquidate a lot at including my, probably my family my my most valuable at my most valuable that card is worth more than a year of my life according to oh <laughs> yeah easily he's according to fair market value yeah, yeah. um <laughs> The the sticker, which is the only PSA 10 copy of that Luke sticker, sold for fifty seven thousand uh-huh. dollars. A, a heck of a deal if yeah. you've got a fifty seven <laughs> fifty seven six laying around, you know. Yeah. Um, the Vader sold for forty eight thousand dollars again. Little go. gold sticky right on there. <laughs> uh, and they grabbed a couple other just notable sales. Uh, the Harrison Ford is Han Solo was 7,500. The Han and Chewie shoot it out was, uh, 5,760. That's an then, old grade. I don't think I'd be paying $4,000 for uh, an old grade then. For the, yeah, for the old labels. Yeah. Yeah, but, I think. Yeah, I don't, know. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't uh, understand any of this, obviously, but. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's all out of my, my wheelhouse. Uh, 
course, you do have the horrified Luke sees his family killed uh, at eight hundred and seventy dollars. That and, I can consider. You know, <laughs> if if I didn't have to pay rent or be responsible with my money, I probably would have been interested in that. But fortunately, it's not the financial reality of my life. So I hope whoever got it um, enjoys it in their collection. Um, I'd yeah. say a lot because uh, basically they had the all of the the blue series and then various other ones from you know two through five that that you know if it wasn't like the key cards were selling five six hundred up to fifteen hundred dollars like that was kind of like the range on the not the key cards but i mean my sense of it was these are obviously high-end collectors who are working towards or have part of a PSA 10 set and are completing collections or, or just adding cards that they thought were cool, especially in those, those higher values and and rarities, because there's just so few of them, you know, and it's a very collectible set, but yeah, I was just like, that's uh, you're not going to see that, that type of auction every day with that many PSA 10s. And I imagine when you got a lot of big money playing, in a space and something like this, maybe not the cheapest you're going to get a PSA 10 no. of that a horrified Luke sees his family killed. I, d- I don't know how many of them exist, but not again, many, when yeah, you've but... got, when you've got people that have this kind of disposable income, throwing it around, sometimes it might just be, you know, there's a convenience fee of $200 beyond market price for me to pick this up right now and not have to think about yeah. it. Again, and that's fine because, <laughs> because I am leaking money. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, Still wild, so, wild stuff out there. Fun, to, fun to watch the results and the sales. Uh, sad that I, I'm not just a blindly wealthy and could have just bid on so many of these because there's a just all of these. I mean, we love the the vintage stuff. Obviously, um, we've grown to really appreciate that. But PSA tens ain't ain't really our wheelhouse. We're you know we're six and seven guys here yeah, as I it's. Was... And, Eyeballing a thirty dollar PSA eight from the yellow series that looked That's pretty, pretty good. good to me. Yeah, it was a good looking yeah. card. Uh it was um yeah, it was all of uh, all of the our hero it was a great hero shot. I forget what card it was. Anyway, um that the thing that really stands out to me on these tins are is the color of the blue and the red and the yellow. <laughs> Just man. Pops. Good looking yep. good looking cards. I mean the the print quality on these in general are all over the place. So the it, the tins are rare. You know, it's 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 the modern day version of the parallel. If you've got a a tin of any of these, because they're they're so limited in in terms of how many there are. Um, but yeah, cool uh cool auction, cool results. Good job for the seller who I you know enjoy your. Whatever the hell you're gonna do, <laughs> your hundreds of thousands of dollars that you have from your baseball Star Wars cards now, uh, which yeah, is good job. Cool, but yeah, well done, well done by you. All right, moving on to some random, less blow you away sales. VC, <laughs> I just pulled a few things off of one thirty point that were interesting to me. Yeah. Um, here we had a best offer accept- accepted of Infus Nest from Chrome Black. Um, I believe this is last year's Chrome Black, right? 2022, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, there's an un-20, up-25 auto, uh, kind of a cool character, 15 bucks, you know, pick up these cards cheap. It's a, for a lot of the stuff right now, it's a buyer's market. Um, yeah. I was, this this PSA 10 of Grief Cargo went for $35, which, <laughs> that seems like a good, like a, a good price for the seller to me, but, you know, it's expensive to grade cards. Yeah. Um, it's just interesting to see where these throwback sets are landing. Then on the I next, I feel like if you're getting these in directly from Tops and then sending them to PSA to have them graded, you're almost always going to get a a ten on it. So yeah, I mean, it's a to me, it's like how I like the Throwback Thursday. How long is the set going to like going to go? Is this the next? living set where we're going to be into the 480s here in a few years, you know? Um, but yeah, I think, you know, they, they look cool. I think yeah. they look cool in a slab. So 
Yeah, it's they're Neato. definitely not. You know, there's not people uh, losing their lunch on grading those. Students, no, is what I'm, no, no, no. Is what yeah. was interesting to me. Yeah, it's, it doesn't seem yeah. like a a terrible thing to do. Um, no, definitely not. And I I get it. I really like those cards. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm curious what we'll think of these early throwback cards in three years or whatever. Um, right. Then uh, I was looking at the the Sapphire Luke Green of sixty. Uh, sold for ninety two dollars. Thought that was a pretty good price for the seller. You know that yeah. that set is not doing well. Um, I would say yeah, really, yeah, no, it, it's not. Um, which I mean, I I get they. I feel like they made more of this than the. I, I this is again just me not really knowing, but it feels like they made more of the Return of the Jedi Sapphire than they did the the series one. And I just think the the images from or series one and what they combine series one and two and Sapphire. Um, so the images I think are more iconic than the return of the Jedi stuff. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. And they got the weird, the, the, you know, the Photoshop jobs on these, some of them are really they bad are just garbage. Which they I, look just terrible. Cracks yeah. me up, but I think it's, it's so a, funny. It's a few <clears throat> car. It's only a few cards that are, Getting decent prices, and they'll be your Luke yeah. Skywalker's. BC, I didn't tell you. I moved our. Uh, I sold our Leia Wicket of the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just sold that. I think it was like fifty dollars, but I wound up settling for on that. Nice, and that's after you know months of it sitting up there and I'm yeah like, it's sat for a while this. so i'll i'll venmo you your share of oh, the bounty just it was in shipping for it. two weeks it got lost and i was uh you know just wondering if that was going to be a big issue and Ugh. then flagship bc you can get some uh, again we've been saying once these things are open there's so much of it prices are going to fall and you can get pretty much anything you want from flagship for a great price right now here's this full chrome Man. card which would have been worth you know i'd say upwards of $20 a few months ago yeah. went for a dollar I, mean, I think when these were first cuz i sold the chosen one mm -hmm. <laughs> um right after i opened it i think i sold that thing for like 20 bucks yeah. um which you know, is is why we always say if you're gonna sell, sell it immediately, and then, especially with this stuff, because there's a ton of it, and then you know you can put that somewhere else, as opposed to if you hold on to your fulcrum and sell it for a dollar. I don't know, good, good, good for the buyer, bad for the seller, but overall, it's a not. I mean, it's a yeah, it's a relatively inexpensive card anyway, so. Yeah. No one's dying over it, you know. I'm I'm loving it because I I don't feel a rush to finish my orange and or set. Although it looks like trying to get a Kino Loy and orange is still they're just just not they're not surfacing right now. Mm. And so people are just listing them yeah. high. Uh, but you know, anyway, there's flagship out there sealed. There's flagship out there on the market. If you're looking for something cheap and fun to collect that I think looks good. Uh, the love flagship. You got a big old box up here waiting for our big old cargo bay ripperoo. Box are right here. Love That'll it. Be a good time. Love um, it. Um, what do we got next, BC? Oh, just some box prices. Um, we're gonna be talking about the Star Wars Unlimited in our set guide this week oh. on on Monday. Uh, discussing what exactly that is. Those are up for pre order. Um. This is from Steel City, and this box of Sapphire Return of the Jedi down to $150. I think it was $200 at launch, or pre-order was $200, I think. I think that's, I think, yeah, I think that's what we got it at on pre-order. Yeah, so you can, you can get your boxes of that, and based on eBay prices, not a bargain. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think it's a fun <laughs> rip. Uh, it is fun, but... I don't know. Stick to our old adage of just go buy the cards you want for a lot less money. Yes. You know? Yes, indeed. Um, I mean, you could pick up that green Luke that you showed earlier for 90 bucks, and probably as many base cards oh, yeah. as you would get out of this box for less than $150. But where's the fun in opening? You yeah, know, it's not just not get there. That red parallel it's that's not worth there. $210 or whatever. 
Boy, I tell you, that saved our bacon. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you did that a good box of that. BC, it's an important day here in the Cargo Bay because it's a Hall of Fame day, as it is every, every Thursday. And uh, BC, we might have something spicy under the under the what? curtain behind the what curtain did today. you do what did i do well bc here comes <laughs> our card here's my drum roll <laughs> Whoa! bc why do we have this leia from chrome galaxy in in the hall of fame i'll tell you why i nominated this leia because it's about time we had a leia card start looking at leia cards I love those 77 cards, but we don't have a good action shot of Leia. We got Leia hanging out, sidelined, you know, watching watching charts during the end battle. <laughs> yeah. But what I really wanted, what I dream of is a card of Leia in the, you know, the by the trash compactor, you know, shooting down at the stormtroopers. We don't really have it. So considered a lot of different cards where Leia looks cool. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess we we landed on this one because uh, I don't know. I want I wanted to lay a card where she was holding a blaster. I like Leia it. Often I, does. You, you you did come in and you said I I'm ready to stir the pot with the Hall of Fame this week, and I said, buddy, let's go for a <laughs> ride. Um, so yeah, you, you know you, you presented a few options. I said, boy, oh boy, the cargo bay is really gonna. Smack a hornet's nest with this one. Uh-huh. But I guess we don't really care, because it's not that big of a deal. It's all made up and nothing really matters. Uh-huh. Um, it's a cool-looking card. Yeah. And uh, I think I think it's a great work of art from the Galaxy series. Looks real nice as a refractor in the chrome. Yeah. I will say that background really shimmers and shines. Um, but yeah, great lay image. And I wish I had a cool parallel of this card. I was waiting on on one in the purple because I wanted the oh, rebel yeah. emblem to stay popping versus having yeah. a pattern back there. But I still haven't landed yep. one. And these are, of course, expensive from yeah. <laughs> 2021 Galaxy. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, again, it's it's about time Leia made it in. But I didn't I didn't want a plain Leia image. I mean, look at what's in the Hall of Fame. We got a bunch of weird stuff. So. We do. We do. We got a couple down the lines and then we got some some weirdo things. I think it's a good reflection of what uh, we as the admins of the Cargo Bay feel are worthy of being put in the gold frame and, and hung on the virtual wall. Beautiful, BC. And I think we're going to continue to kind of go through the original cast, probably. And then once we, we get through who we feel like are essential characters we got to hit, we'll start getting some real uh, spicy just wait till we get our eth koth hall of fame card in there i i can't wait until the captain fordo <laughs> sticker makes it <laughs> yeah slot number 55 or whatever um all right well here's our current poll that will be up by the time this video posts what is the future of sequel trilogy cards bc are they going to go what? up in price as nostalgia builds? Or are they going to decrease in value for some reason? Uh, which would mm. be hard because they're pretty reasonably priced, I would say, at mm. the moment. Mm -hmm. or are those prices going to stay exactly where they are? I'm, I'm trying currently I, to read the future. Get into my prognostication mode. Yeah, I really don't know. But um, <laughs> my, my guess is... Uh, in the current market, probably stay the same for a, a good hot while. Um, if if not go down, I don't know what value there is in them right now. I think if there is any, it's going to be in the Force Awakens. Yeah. Like the first set, the big maybe. Miners, yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's that's where it would be. Um, famously, Star Wars fans are divided uh, on on the sequel trilogy in general uh, doesn't have as much universal praise or appeal um, as the original trilogy. So I don't know. I think it'll be interesting. You'll probably see some, some Kylo Ren's and some Ray's bins uh, that'll probably do, do fairly well in the future. I, I don't think we're going to be seeing 
any, you know, sell for seventy eight thousand oh. uh, dollars in, you know, 40 years or so. But, you know, if you want to diamond hands, those bad boys, you know, go for it. Um, yeah. yeah, interesting to see. I think a big part of it, too, is that, you know, if you look at prequel cards, which there's, you know, the prequels have risen in popularity as that generation got older. But I don't feel like those card sets have exploded in value because they don't look great. And also, yeah. it's not part of the nostalgia that kids have. They had action figures at the ready. They had everything else yeah. available. Unlike our conversation last week, you know, we were talking about yep. finding 77 cards at the drugstore. Um, and right. that was, you know, that was a huge point of nostalgia. Yeah, I think it's kind of similar with the Force Awakens cards, even where there are a lot of c those cards that I do like. I think some of the the shimmery autos are really cool and, mm -hmm. and what have you. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know that the nostalgia factor is baked in like they are with those back when wax packs were, you know, at the drugstore. I, mean, I mean, I I just don't think. Yeah, I mean uh, the the point about it being tied to nostalgia. There's I don't rem I remember seeing Force Awakens, obviously, but I, I don't. Uh, trading cards of Force Awakens didn't enter my mind one bit, uh, and it, I don't. I don't have that same nostalgia for it. I don't know that even the the younger generation who these are movies are probably more geared towards in terms of collectibles and that kind of stuff have even the same feeling about the trading cards associated with it, but I don't, I mean, maybe one day, you know, and 20 years I'll say, you know what I really want is a, a Ray Skywalker rookie card. And they'll go, go hunting for that. I just don't think, I mean, I don't think they're going to be like crazy valuable unless you've got, you know, a big scarcity built in, but yeah, that's just my thinking. Yeah, I d the only time I remember seeing Star Wars cards at all for the sequel trilogy was a box of Force Awakens, I believe, at a Ross Dress for Less. <laughs> like, you know, like on a budget table somewhere. Yeah. And me, me, I think, and this may be manufactured, but there was just a lot of the marketing for the Force Awakens where I was like, this is ugly. Like, I don't like the design of this. Right. And I did like Force Awakens and I loved mm -hmm. that it was happening and, uh, you know, that there yeah. was merchandise out. But just the colorways and the Kylo Ren's face on everything, I was like, this is ugly design. Um, so I think I probably looked at that box and went, gross. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like I said, there are a lot of those cards that I like. Uh, so. Yeah. Anyway, that's our poll. Tell us what you think. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see what the results are next week. Tell and... us what you think. And if you want to say why, pop that in the comments. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I will say I don't usually respond to comments on the polls because I don't want to muddy the waters, you know? I, let the, mm. I usually leave the mm -hmm. poll comments alone. Uh, let them be. Out. But I do, you know, we read them. They feature them, so that's whoa! You can be featured. Whoa! On the whoa you can be featured on the card of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, here are our living set cards, BC. Um, nice. We got Couple episode nice two, ones. two yeah. Anakin, uh, super battle droid. Pretty cool. Prominently featuring the Padawan braid, which yes. I like. Yeah, yeah. prominent. The elevator scene, I do believe, where Obi Wan and Anakin discuss what what I wish one of the prequel movies would have been, which was remember when we had adventures together, Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> like I wanted a whole, I wanted a whole movie of you guys having adventures. Don't be so greedy, Adam. Okay, that's not, that's not what Star Wars was about. It was about taxation and trade federations. Okay. <laughs> That's that's where the meat is. Hey, don't forget, I'm the Clone Wars defender. Uh, that's on, right. On the show, I uh, I watched I watched that movie way too much. Um, and is that it? No, we got Throwback oh boy, Thursday, oh and oh these boy, will be oh gone. Boy. I think by the time this video is out, there'll be a new set in. Um, with just this go buy them on eBay if you really want them. They're I, gonna be cheaper. I uh I love these. Uh, I think they look sick. Looks <laughs> I love clean, this design. Looks good. Uh, uh, yeah, just just super cool. Um, 
I, I don't know if this has been... Was this here last week, this design, too? I don't know. I haven't I, been keeping up. I don't. Th I think this is the next round of design that's coming okay. out. If I'm not mistaken, if I am, drop it in the comments below and say, BC, you idiot. Yeah, please, please berate BC for being an idiot. Please. Yeah, please. I'm... What the internet's for. Eventually, I expect to have employment again, and at that point, I'm going to be picking up some of these Throwback Thursday sets that I missed. Um, I'm sad to miss my shot at the the parallels and alts of these because uh, this is fun. This is more fun to me than, um, I don't know, a lot of Star Wars card collecting. I like this Throwback set more and more the longer it goes on. I think it looks cool in a yeah. binder. I think the cards are interesting. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a, I think it's a cool set. I like how they're integrating all those different uh, different designs. I do think some of them are better than others. This one is m maybe one of my favorites so far. Yeah, just this would be a great autograph card if you're gonna go get Cad Bane's auto on one of these. Boom, um, that look good. Pop it on there. It I sure almost would. took that Boba Fett into Photoshop because. That stark shadow has always bothered me on that image, and I almost went in Photoshop and, and brightened the shadow out just to oh. compare and contrast because that image is used a lot. But uh, it is, it is used a lot. No, I think uh, the shadow is part of the charm. Yeah, that's know? what I decided when I got it into the Photoshop. <laughs> just like that seam and the set, that set line in the background. Yeah, where it's like, oh, this is clearly a flat on a studio floor. Love um, and BC, you got an updated card garden. Look at nice. Do. Look at I've updated the card. Nice. Updated the card garden a little bit. So this is the BC view of what I'm looking at. Um, so you know, we we were talking uh, with uh, Greg of the Rebel Base Card Podcast last week um, about the the joy of organization. Did a little bit of it the other day, you know. Cleaned off some things, sorted some cards, put them in some boxes, made a little space for my newly assembled Lego ghost ship yeah. and the Ahsoka uh, Jedi fighter there. I love those stands you've got them on. Those are looking nice. Just some cheapy peepy acrylic stands that I found. I have been looking at the very expensive ship from overseas like custom made acrylic stands for the specific oh. Lego sets, which make me very happy because they can display them at, at various angles. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but I said, you know what? I'll wait and I'll just pop them on these cheapy PP acrylic stands that I bought a while ago for my display shelf and just put them on there. So it, it works well enough for yeah. my purposes at the moment. Can we add a cheapy PP section to the, the cargo yeah, van I, where, we, I think we where we peep some cheapies? <laughs> Yeah, cheap, let's cheap go cards. peep some peep some cheapies <laughs> on cheapy peepies. <laughs> no, I, I think those stands work are more than adequate. Uh, and yeah, that, yeah, that ghost is looking good. It's dope. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm also I've added. It's kind of hard to see. I've I've been grabbing occasionally the like the vintage action figures because I like the card backs on there. Yeah, found the Thrawn. Yeah, that looks and awesome. of course, I've I've got a I've got to show off my amazing flagship wide vision card yes yeah, pulled pulled on this very channel by mine own hand love that card yeah awesome yeah looking good bc i'm jealous of that andor poster too that's that was nice. such a sweet snag when I, I grabbed that whenever we went to see they re-released rogue one on the imax before andor came out and those andor posters were sitting out there i was like yeah i'll take one of these one of the best decisions I've ever made. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh man, I I'm, I'm gonna have to get some something andor related eventually in my card garden. But BC, I guess that does it for this week's hobby towel. We have done it again. We're back. Oh my goodness! Except for next week, I'm gonna be gone because of Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's right. Which we, leads me to Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, we may uh, we may have an upload on Thursday of some kind, but it will be old and out of date. So yeah. Yay! Enjoy. Not unlike ourselves. Enjoy your week, folks. And uh, until then, I guess bye forever. 
And I'm ready at, at your bidding, BC. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just closed it on the car. <laughs> All right, at my bidding, here I <laughs> Somehow I messed me it up the... again, but that's going to have at to be. At your bidding. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> what are we doing here? What are